Hey guys, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan and we're taking a look at a BP5 Subaru Legacy Twin Turbo Four Wheel Drive. And so the Legacy is a vehicle I super love. In fact, I have owned one and I loved it very much. This is the next generation after the one that I owned. And this is the first time that we've had one of these vehicles on the channel. Not the first time we've bought one, but the first time that we've had the BP5 on the channel because some of our customers don't have the videos on the channel. Okay, so uh, this one here is the station wagon version, the more popular of the two. You can get it in a sedan, and basically what you're looking at is the, uh, once you're done with the Impreza, you're not a boy racer anymore, you get the more mature Legacy. You still get the EJ20 engine, that's a boxer two liter, with turbocharger on two turbochargers. No, wait, did they change over to a single? Yeah, they did. For this generation, it's a single turbocharger, pardon me. The previous generation was the last twin turbo. So you can see the turbo is in there and it says, don't touch. Nice big intercooler. You don't really need the twin turbo setup. I think a single is actually a simpler and probably a better system. Now it is interesting though. This one has a, an aftermarket exhaust. I believe that this generation stopped with the unequal length headers. If you listen to it, the boxer rumble is gone and the previous generation has it and so I know that the Impreza only the JDM one the USDM one didn't do this but the JDM version of the Impreza for the same year as this 2003 stopped with the unequal length headers and so in earlier generation you get that sound that Imprezas make this one has a smoother sound to it and if you go with the equal length headers you actually get a different profile for the power curve. You can get higher power if you go with equal length headers, but it kind of uh, does something with the torque or down low. So I guess that's uh, been massaged out of it though, because this is the, uh, at the time, the most advanced version of the EJ20, which I guess they tuned for good driving. I haven't actually given this one a nice drive, and so I'm not sure how well it drives compared to the older ones, but legacies are legacies and they're cool, so. Also, this is the 2.0 GT Spec B, and so this is kind of like the continuation of the GTB version. So you have the aftermarket suspension on there, and you get the full horsepower. And this one, although it's an automatic transmission, you can select the gears yourself with buttons on the steering wheel or shifter, and so that is kind of handy. You can get these with a the 5-speed if you want, but they're fairly uncommon. Okay, let's close the hood. And... There we go. You can see the functional hood duct on there that feeds into the pretty large intercooler. The aero kit on this, have a look. Cool looking front bumper there, and I believe that that stock, this grill may be aftermarket because it has the kind of aftermarket look to it. It has no Subaru badges on it. And I believe that the wheels, these are uh, 18 inch stock wheels on the 2.0 spec B. Don't know 100%, but I think so. Okay, so I'm going to read this and translate it and then go around the outside and then inside and then we'll be done the, the review here. So it's a 2003 Legacy Touring Wagon 2.0 GT Spec B. B is for Bilstein suspension, so thumbs up for Bilstein. They make some really good suspension. Um, even stock suspension on this is, is lovely to drive. 2 liter EJ20, original pearl color. Auction grade 4 with an interior exterior C. I think they were pretty hard on both of those. It could be a 4BB maybe maybe 129 160 kilometers so a little bit on the higher side automatic transmission purchase from user navi TV with tv extra gauges aftermarket wheels sti exhaust and it's really cool having that dual exhaust i think it suits the car really well okay windshield rock chip interior dirty and stain and uh, interior wear winter tires uh, wheel scratch door mirror scratched various scratches and dents and then looking at the body, we have some A2 scratches here. We have paint crack on the back, but otherwise the vehicle's super clean. Now there are some minor dents in this area here, one, two, three of them, but nothing really to point out. I did get them in the other video, but uh, none of the damage on the vehicle is really that damaging. Okay, so let's go around. I think it's a, a great looking sports wagon. It's nice to have that 280 horsepower. I love the taillight covers. I think that those are one of the best parts of the vehicle. And I believe those taillight covers come as the aero package. 
original as kind of an option, but I've never seen them before, and I just think that they look so cool. And usually I'm not a cover, a taillight or headlight cover type person, but they just really do it for me. Because these taillights are a little bit weird. They, they have kind of a small surface face that points towards the rear, but a large side profile. And so it covers a lot of that unnecessary area where the taillight used to be. And gives it kind of a clean transformer-ish Gundam-like look. It's pretty rad. Okay, I remember when these came out, they were the most recent Subaru that was available uh, when I moved to Japan. So I remember seeing these and going, wow, that's what the new Subaru looks like. Man, I feel like I've been here forever. You can see the extra gauges there. Here's a dent I didn't notice. It has the roof racks, but these roof racks are basically only used to mount the Subaru version of the roof racks. Let's go into the back. Oh, let's look at that exhaust. Cool, very cool how those large pipes kind of shows the purpose of the vehicle. This is a sports sedan. This isn't your grandma's car. Smells like a JDM car inside, and I know that sounds a little bit funny, but uh, Japanese cars do smell different from regular cars, and this one has a nice, strong smell that's gonna stick around for a while. Spare tire in there. Okay. Close it up. And let's go to the interior now. Okay, so first off, door card here. The handle has some peeling on it. Okay. Power windows and power folding mirrors function properly. Just noticed a little crack here. Kind of a weird place to get a crack in a dashboard. So I think this is probably like the fourth or fifth of the BP generations uh, legacy that we have exported. And so I don't know them as well as I know the previous two generations. I think the seats are pretty reasonable for a sports sedan. Comfortable, nice bolstering in them. Kind of sportier than your regular car. The steering wheel has a little bit of extra wear on it, like in the section here, you can see that. Otherwise it's good, it's perforated leather, it feels nice when you're driving. The gauges do something really fun when you turn on the car. Check it out. Whee! And just that little extra detail is really fun. Now these ones do it too. Whee! And so the Defi gauges like these would typically do that. Um, I think they started doing that around like 2000 or something and then Subaru was like, wow, we work with you for the official gauges. Now these ones are Defi gauges, but they're not official Subaru ones. The Subaru ones will say like genome on them. And uh, they are made by Defi. And so I guess they have some sort of a partnership. I did turn off the car. Let's turn that back on. Okay, so the power steering is good. The shifting was lagging a little bit, but I only did it two times and then I tried it again and again and again and again and then nothing after that. So it seems like it does it when it's cold, but it's really not that cold right now. This vehicle is going to Canada and so it's gonna be super cold there. I would get the transmission fluid changed. You may have some repairs in that, but it doesn't really seem like anything's broken since it works perfectly after it lagged just at the beginning. It might just be that the vehicle was having a bad day and he's like, I don't want to shift, I don't want to shift. Okay, here's the shift yourself section with the push the buttons for the shifter. I believe that's what these buttons for. I don't know for certain because the older ones had like one button here and one on the back. And these ones, I mean, what else could that be up and down? It doesn't say volume or anything like that. Okay, this one opens with hand power. Scratches on here, Razo. Razo is like a brand, like, it's a ghetto brand. I don't know any, uh, uh, what the brands are that are like that, kind of like low quality Canadian tire style brands. It's like that. Uh, this part here is uh, discolored. I don't know why Subarus do that. Toyotas do that too. Okay, and 
Okay, and these seats are adjustable. They look like they're super leaned back, so you can adjust them upright more if you want. And then look at this. Locking areas for your baby car seat so your babies don't die. And that's usually what people want is non-dead babies. Strangely, in Japan, the moms and the dads don't put the kids in car seats here, and they just climb around in the back seats, and it's super popular. I would say over 50% of the parents do that. And so you're wondering why the population of Japan is declining? It's because they don't put their kids into car seats. Okay, end of the video here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and have a nice day.